stages of an adventure is always exciting and it varies massively how much you may need to take depending on how far you want to go how many nights you might be out for and also the conditions and the seasons so in the summer months we'll hopefully have a lighter smaller bag because we'll have a smaller sleeping bag we won't need the extra warmth that we might in winter and we may have less layers as well in the summer. So we may look for a bag this sort of size. This is 46 litres and this would do spring, summer, autumn potentially, depending on how many warm layers you want. When you come to winter, you might go up to a bag of this sort of size, which is 65 litres. But only just think of it as it capable of taking warmer layers or a larger sleeping bag for that extra warmth that you might need. Don't use it to take the extra equipment like two books to read in the evening or you know a big battery pack because look after your body, keep things light. So we, there's some really obvious things that we would take but there's some less obvious and I'm going to go through everything. So to start with we're going to need somewhere to sleep so a tent and they come in all sorts of sizes and I like to separate them out. My poles I use as a bit of structure for the rucksack and put them down the back, but always inside. Um, if there's more than one of you in the tent, then separate out the parts. Someone carries poles and pegs and the other person carries the inner and the outer. When we come to a sleeping bag, then it's personal preference, how you warm you want to be or how, how much warmth you need. Along with the sleeping bag, we need a mat to sleep on. Um, and again, they come in different thicknesses and different sizes. Again, I love going for the lightweight option and maybe I compromise a bit of comfort with that, but having a small pack is really important to me. Um, a pillow is can be a little added extra in there. Um, instead of a specific pillow, I'll often use just my spare layers or my jackets and uh, put them under my head. As well as um, your tent, you're gonna need some evening food and I love to have a warm meal. Um, there's no point in suffering because there's so many lightweight items out there to do your cooking with. Um, there's a pan here that takes the gas stove really nicely and I have a nice little lightweight stove as well that folds out and attaches to the gas canister, like so. And that'll pop on there, and then my stove on, my pan on top. Once my water's boiled, then all I need to do is pour it into this dehydrated uh, food that I have here. And there's lots on the market, um, but they're so light to carry and they taste pretty good. Um, along with my stove, I obviously need to light it and some waterproof matches are very handy. Also, when you're cooking, uh, remember to just use hand sanitizer. You can get ill out in the mountains quite easily, um, not keeping clean. Water, um, this has got an integrated filter as well so that you can try and make sure you're drinking clean water. Along with sort of my evening meal, it, you've obviously got a plan how many lunches you might need or breakfast. And again, that's personal preference, what you may take. There's a lot of options out there. You know, some people will just like plain oats with some milk. Other people might want a bit more than that. I like to take lots of snacks with me and make sure there's some treats in there as well. Getting hungry whilst you're out in the mountains is no fun at all. Along with food, then we also need some toiletries with us. Um, toothbrush, I always go for as light as I can, so cut the toothbrush down, use a tube with the minimal amount of toothpaste in it. Um, I take a very small packable towel 
and then some of the extras that I have for Scotland is a tick remover just in case and obviously some insect repellent for those midges that can drive you crazy especially in the early morning and evening I'll also have with me some sun cream trowel for that leave no trace policy that we need to stick to um, so yeah dig a hole bury your waste unless you're carrying it out with you the next thing we need to talk about is a little bit on navigation and safety so I will make sure I've got basic first aid with me just in case and I'll then carry a map and compass and I'll have a map that's sort of folded to the area I'm going to be in accessible and then I'll carry a bigger map that is just there as backup in case I misplace the one that's folded along with that I've obviously got a mobile phone with me for emergencies and also potentially to use as a bit of a GPS and check my navigation head torch as well in case I'm having to navigate in the dark then I've got to be able to see and also handy in the tent in the evenings we've talked about some safety equipment but also it's really important to make sure we've got the right clothing to suit the conditions so having waterproof trousers and a jacket is important depending on the weather forecast if say the weather forecast is going to be sunny for the time you're out then maybe just the soft shell will suffice and keep the wind off as well as those though in the evening when you've stopped moving and you're a bit more stationary and it's cooled down a little bit some sort of insulated layer may be really nice depending on the time of year again and forecast then a set of gloves and some sort of warmth for your head so a headband here might be really nice to have with you too one last thing that i'll mention is just having some dry bags and it's often really good not just because of wet weather but also just to separate things and keep it all organized in your rucksack so i'll maybe have all my cooking things in one little pack together and then my clothing separated from it in another dry bag <laughs>